Over the past two World Championship Finals in track and field, Jakob Inga Brixen from Norway has placed second in the men's 1500 finals. In both Eugene, Oregon and Budapest, Hungary, Jakob ran solid times, but on the day, the scintillating, the brutal finishing kicks of both Jake Whiteman and Josh Kerr from Great Britain ultimately proved too much for Jakob Inga Brixen. Back in 2022, Whiteman made his move with around 200 meters remaining, and for his final half lap, he threw down splits of 13.47 and 13.64 seconds to close with a final 200 and 27.11. Fast forward to 2023, and the timing was eerily similar to what happened in the year prior, because with almost exactly 200 meters to go, Josh Kerr made his move, and with his final half lap, he achieved splits of 12.93 and 13.62 seconds, an overall final 200 meters in 26.55. Whether it was the perfect timing of these moves, a surprise Dinga Brixen on the day, superior speed and strength, or just the magic of these two Scottish middle distance greats, Jakob was simply unable to take the gold medal in either of these world championships. To put it simply, both of these losses from Jakob were, in some respects, an upset. After winning the gold in 2021 in the Tokyo Olympic Games, Jakob entered as the clear favorite in 2022. And another big reason for this favoritism in 2022 was because just one month before these world finals, he had run the single fastest one mile run in 20 years, throwing down a time of 3.46.46 seconds in the 2022 Bislett Games in Oslo. And even though he was considered as the favorite in 2022, he became even more of a favorite in 2023, having gone undefeated in his buildup in the 1500, and he also broke the world record in the two mile distance just a few months before the world championships, having run a time of seven minutes, 54.1 seconds in Paris, France. With these two previous world championship defeats now behind him, Jakob now faces an even more difficult task of defending his Olympic gold medal. And with the record-breaking Josh Kerr on the rise and a seemingly endless group of athletes now gunning for the podium, Jakob is currently in a very difficult position of implementing and executing the proper racing strategy come the world's biggest stage. And even though many have doubted this Norwegian's ability to challenge the world's best during the Olympic Games, we just witnessed something extremely special from Jakob that honestly might make him unbeatable in this year's Olympic Finals. If we go back to the 2004 Athens Olympics and the men's 1500 final, we saw one of the greatest races of all time. For this Olympic final, it was really a match of the greats, as Bernard Lagat from Kenya was clashing against Hisham El Garouj from Morocco. Now, despite being arguably the greatest 1500 meter runner of all time, El Garouj had fallen short of a gold medal for the previous two Olympic cycles, missing the gold medals in 1996 and the year 2000. But despite battling against the world's best and father time himself at this point, El Garouj implemented a racing strategy that will never be forgotten. With around two laps to go, El Garouj finally took the lead and slowly but steadily amped up the pace faster and faster and faster. Even though the runners did not know it at the time, they were only increasing the pace for these final two laps. And over the final 100, he ran his fastest split of the day and somehow held off Bernard Lagat for the gold medal. With the final 800 meters in one minute and 46 seconds, El Garouge solidified his name as an absolute legend on this day. And this 1500 meters was not just special because El Garouge finally won his gold medal, it was special because literally every 100 meter split over the final 600 meters only got quicker and quicker. An incredibly challenging racing strategy that requires nothing but perfection to execute correctly. And even though this demanding tactic is next to impossible to properly execute into your race plan against the world's best, we just saw Jakob Ingebrigtsen do this exact same thing. In this year's European Championships in Rome, Italy, Ingebrigtsen displayed absolute mastery for this 1500 meter win. With two laps remaining, Ingebrigtsen was firmly in the lead, and from this point on, he slowly but steadily amped up the pace. 
Now, you can see ever so slightly that the field was starting to spread out behind Ingebrigtsen, and that's because this tempo would go from fast to borderline sprinting speed. For his final 600 meters, Ingebrigtsen achieved 100 meter splits of 14.12, 13.98 seconds, 13.69, 13.54, 13.25 seconds, and for his final 100 meters, Ingebrigtsen somehow outdid himself again, shifting into a crazy dimension of speed with a final 100 meters of 12.86 seconds, which is honestly rarely seen in a 1500, let alone after only increasing the pace for the previous two laps. This performance was almost a carbon copy of what El Garouge did back in the 2004 Olympic Finals, except for Ingebrigtsen's time, it was about three seconds faster than El Garouge's win in 2004, and it's something that we honestly just never see in the sport of running. Also, and this is quite important to mention here, for Ingebrigtsen's final 200 meters, he achieved a time of 26.11, which was much faster than Jake Whiteman in 2022, and it was also faster than Josh Kerr's final 200 in the 2023 World Championships. Now, it's tempting to say that this 1500 was a negative split, which is a common expression showcasing that an athlete ran their second half faster than their first half, but I think this quite significantly undersells what Ingebrigtsen just did, because for this kind of race, I would say that this was more of a cascading negative split, or even perhaps an infinite negative split, given how he constantly accelerated over the final 600. Now, seeing this race in real time was already impressive enough, but to better understand just how incredible this performance really was, from 800 meters up to 1200, Jakob split a time of 56.4 seconds for this 400 split, which is practically world record pace for this 400 meters. And then after running this split with constant acceleration, he ran times of 13.54, 13.25, and 12.86, which is well under world record pace for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. With this kind of race now behind him, Ingebrigtsen's confidence simply has to be high, and he will undoubtedly take this running momentum to this year's Paris Games. And in order for Jakob to win this year's Olympics, some kind of tactical warfare like this will likely be necessary. Perhaps it won't be exactly like this, but he will certainly need to change what he has done for the past two global finals. Now for one, we have already seen in this year's pre-classic that Josh Kerr can hold a strong pace, as he not only took down Jakob in this open mile, but he broke the British record with a time of 345.34. But if Jakob were to run his cascading negative split over the final two laps, the question remains as to whether or not Josh Kerr would be able to hold on to this kind of acceleration. These important questions are still yet to be answered, but tactics and trash talk aside, this year's 1500 meters in the Olympics is going to be one of the most entertaining events of the year, and that is almost a guarantee. And no matter who ultimately comes out on top, they will have to earn this title against the world's best. And now it is your turn. What do you think about this 1500 performance from this year's European Championships from Jakob Ingebrigtsen? What do you think about his accelerating final two laps? What do you think about his finishing 200? And how do you think this will play out come the Olympic Finals? And let's be real, the race right now at least appears to be between Josh Kerr, Jakob Ingebrigtsen, and perhaps Yard Nagus, who has proven his fitness with a 343 mile last year and a 346 mile in 2024. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below and we'll have a conversation about the 1500 finals. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.